Ciao, everyone. Ciao and ching ching. Happy Sunday. If you're watching this with us live, if you're watching this replay, I hope you're having a great day. What are you having to drink? A little Martel Cognac today. It's a little bit nippy in the air. When the frost is on the pumpkin, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm having my favorite red wine, Nero de Avila, from a bottle from my friend Francesca's. And last week, we tried out the new wine, but I prefer this one. So if you missed our last live chat, I'll leave you a comment. And welcome, everyone. We're so glad that you could join us. We have so much to talk about, okay? So first, we have Alfred's hats to talk about, your grandfather. We have the Sicilian flag to talk about. We have... Be careful. Uh, Be careful. To talk about. But first, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who has joined us and has helped us continue these productions. Right, Al? I want to talk to my pal Joey Asioni and Sue. Buck up. Don't worry. It's not the end of the world. Hello to John, to I love Travis. You, Joe. <laughs> yeah, we thank them. And I want to also say a big shout out to our Australian friends. Last week, we were reminded that not just from the United States, but H. Alicia said, you know, you mentioned always people from America, but you tend to forget our friends in Australia and also the UK. So a big shout out to all the Sicilians in Australia. What about uh, Su, Su Punto and Joe? And Joe up in, uh, where are they? Newfoundland or P. I. Prince Edward Islands in Canada or someplace like that? And Canada too. That's yeah. a big one. Another yeah. big one is uh, Brazil. So, Al, what Brazil is right. We have people from Brazil. You Can know you what I wanted that? to start out by talking? No. Go ahead. Whatever you want to talk about. We forgot about. to talk about the orange. Ah. All right, so for dinner today, we made this incredible beef stew. Right? Yes, it was incredible. But we Indeed, I'm going to post a video on my Facebook. Page. Also, we had an orange salad. Now, how do you make your own orange salad? Make, or, here's what they do, okay, to make a few extra bucks, those crafty Sicilians. They, they put the, the whole it's twig so on it, okay? Yeah, but guess what? If you buy 10 pounds of oranges, all of a sudden you're paying for this and you throw it away. Anyways, I make an orange salad which is terrific. It basically is two ingredients. It's an orange that you slice, you slice it up like this. And in between it, you put a slice of onion, either white onion or red onion, whatever you like. And then you put on top of it, you drizzle uh, EVOO, extra virgin olive oil, mm -hmm. uh, balsamic vinegar, uh, pepper, and salt, and then squeeze some lemon juice on it. You know the way I like it? Freaking awesome. With the fennel, with the fennel. The, yeah, they have the that, too and they put too, a little yeah. bit of parsley. That's the way they usually... My pal Roberto up in Sicilia taught me that years ago. He does a great job. Some people also garnish it with parsley. Now, you guys know what this is? It's a Fiki de India. Fiki de India. In English? Prickly pear. A prickly pear. Or cactus pear. Cactus pear. pear. Now, that one still has the skin. Now, this one, we de-skinned it. Is, is anyone interested on how to uh, de-skin this? It's really an art to de-skin it, and we can do a video. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to do see a video on how to take the skin off, and this is what it looks like. Are you gonna eat that? Yeah, I'm gonna eat that, and it has a little bit of um, seeds in it, right? So you have to be careful. She's funny, she says it's a little, a little bit of seeds, a little bit of seeds, she said a little bit, right? Let me tell you, Very you sweet. eat two of those, and it's a shooter. <laughs> you're gonna be running to the bathroom. You know, my, my best my best advice is if you're gonna have one, you have a piece of bread in your hand. So eat one and then eat some bread. Because if you eat two of those or three of those, forget about it. Now people usually have this for breakfast or as a sweet. Yeah. And afterwards, they slice it up, and many stores sell it with the skin off already because it's sometimes difficult to do this. It's very prickly, so you have to be careful. So why is the name Pick the India? It means literally figs of India. It comes because from the Mideast East. Columbus. Originally. No, it comes from Mexico. It's Mexico? originally from Mexico. And then, 1492 it, and then it spread. I thought it came the, from. I thought it yeah. did. And then it spread. And when Christopher Columbus came back in the 1400s, he thought, of course, he found India. And he called it Fig the India. I want to read a couple of things here. Uh, Peter is back. Buongiorno. I'll Peter be planting who? five varieties of garlic, including Sicilian artichoke garlic. Are you guys familiar with the Sicilian tradition of placing garlic in the 
in the birthing bed for a successful delivery. No. Never heard Very of that. Very cool. Hi, Maria. Never heard B of that. Bee and Don Green, thank you so much for Bee, your Dawn Green. generous donation. Love Patty Ann is here. I love Dawn. Hey, Dawn, you and I are going to have a drink together when you come here, okay? Guaranteed you. One? When you, well, when Bee comes here, <laughs> Dawn and I are hanging around the pool. We have some Different type of vodka is the test. He's a vodka drinker, you know. Oh. Yeah. Thomas Catone, buongiorno from South Carolina, buongiorno. All right, Al. So what are we going to talk about? Today? Why don't we do your hats? Hey, do you oh. like his hat? I got it in Chefalu at Coppola, right on one of the main strands. Coppola is the Italian word for hat. Uh, we say, what do we say in Sicilian? What do you hat. say? No, I'm just asking you. I, I don't know. You tell me. I forgot right now. <laughs> It'll come to you. Capadutsu is what it's called, the Capadutsu. Why am I wearing this one? This is a very unusual hat because it's got the different uh, uh, plaid type over here, but it, it's 100% made in Italy wool. It's a winter hat, okay? I have like three or four of this model, but the other ones are made from uh, not wool. It's usually a synthetic thing, but I try to stick to the ones made in Italy. I see a lot of men here wearing these. I love everybody this one. wears these. Now this one looks really good on you. This too. one over here, if you could see it. Here, let me. I have it's a whole. I have about a tinacria, which I, we're going to talk about a little bit later. I have about later. twenty of these hats. I collect hats, and this one over here also was made in Italy. I wore this last week on the show. I'll try to wear a different hat uh, every day. Now, no, let me see. This one over here is deceptive. This is what you call a pork a pork chop hat. A short, <laughs> no, a short brimmed hat. Okay, you see these in New York especially. And if you look on the inside of it, it has the uh, linen on the inside. And you see, wow, that thing That's must have cost a lot of hat, right? A lot of money. In fact, it's made of paper. Hi, Patty. It's a paper hat. There are Fred a lot McNeil. of paper hats that you could buy. This one about, was about $40 because it's, it's a really good quality hat. What else we have? Now, summer hats, everybody wears these. Okay, in the summer because there's wide brim over here. And you can buy these in all the tourist spots. They're about 15 or 20 bucks. Next year, I'll have a gray one, unless this guy wears out on me. But it's really a helpful hat to, uh, to, to wear. I really like it. And this one is also made in the PRC, the People's Republic of China. And this also is made of paper. Paper. Remember right? I crushed one of them? This, on the other hand, here, this is the, this is the Cadillac of summer wear. This is a Borsellino. Borsellino hats, those are the caddies of uh, Italian-made hats. I'm Looking telling you good. right now. What? Right. You I, I like the one I bill. bought it. What? I, I like the one that I picked no, up for uh, What Esther got for me was good. If for those of you who ever stopped by Rome, at the top of the Spanish Steps is the Hasla. Make a right at the Hasla. Go down the street about 100 yards on the right is a Borsellino shop there. Okay? And Borsellino hats, they had regular hats. They cost a lot of dough, but guess what? They're unbelievable. I mean, hats, uh, everybody wears a hat in in Italy, especially in Sicily, especially, especially now. Especially now. November 1st, it's like, bing, put your hat on, and that's about it. <laughs> uh, Christine so, says, I'll buy some hats when I come, need a good one. Christine, I have a great one for hats as well. For Christine? Yeah, for okay, Christine Harrison. Yeah. So I just want to say one more thing, that if you're watching this live, this will exist on our YouTube, so you can, if you're coming in late, you can share it and watch from the beginning. So now, Al, oh, we already talked about this. I'll you know what I want to, huh? I'll take, you take that up. You know what I want to talk about? Oh, you know what we forgot to talk about with the Fick of the Indias? What? One of my favorite things is the Fick of the India liqueur. Figurinha. Figurinha yeah, liqueur. Yeah, the liqueurs. Yeah, they have the liqueurs. The liqueurs they are also very have, good. I used to import uh, the jam. Figurinha That's jam. right. And it's actually one of the symbols of Sicily, right? Yeah, but guess what? My, my view is overrated. I mean, frankly, Ciao, Stefania. I think it's over. Stefania, Stefania is here how, was from your, Sicily. how was your sweet and sour rabbit today? Was it good? Stefania and I were talking this morning. She was making for her husband and her kids um, sweet and sour rabbit, which I want to try. Sweet and sour, or sweet and savor. I thought she said sweet and sour. sour. I couldn't Maybe. believe. Yeah, and then she's I, a great cook. And I was making beef stew, so she sent me a picture of her part of uh, the rabbits cooking, and I sent her a thirty-second video of our. Uh, beef stew. And by the way, how was the beef stew? It was excellent. But who was the best assistant? Excuse me. Yes, she was. I uh, actually Stefania got a piece of made you a very good 
apple pie, as I recall, a couple of years Stefania ago. Stefania is, as I said to her, in my view, she's one of the, I would call them perfect Sicilian women. She's like beautiful, <laughs> smart. She's a mom. It's true. She's a wife. She's got a great personality and she's fluent in English. So she's like, you know, she hits them all right over there. There you go, Stefania. Yep. Joe Sioni says, I have had the jam. It's great. Uh, Patty Ann says, you like the, Italian, you like the food Sicilians in the gym, are Joe? always talking hats and food. It's so true. Stefania says, very good. My family loves it. That's Perfect. Great. Hope awesome. to see you guys soon. Huh? It's been a long time since we've seen each other. All right. All right. What's so the next up? Let's talk about the Sicilian flag. Okay. You've seen this on our show, right? The Sicilian flag, Bagnera de Sicilia, right? Yeah. Now, you know, you see that in the middle, the three-legged person, the Trinacria, as they say. Trinacria is also the symbol of Sicily. I wanted to bring you here my mask because my mask also has the Trinacria. Oops, upside down. See? I have Trinacrias all over. Now, the Trinacria, what is it? represent well the woman that's medusa okay and in the historical trinacria as a matter of fact believe it or not i have a tattoo on my back that i got in the, the mid 90s it doesn't have the wheat okay today the wheat symbolizes fertility, fertility of, because right. of, but i they used to have snakes which because medusa remember medusa was in um, ulysses uh Ulysses by the, you know, the famous book where, uh, where Ulysses on the way back from Troy got lost and ended up in Sicily. And mm -hmm. then the one-eyed Cyclops got him. Well, in any case, Medusa uh, has snakes on it here, but then they change it to wheat. Okay, what well, else? Wait a second. But did you know the Medusa actually has been used in emblems and also money during the Greek era sure, in the third a, and fourth century BC? So yeah. this symbol has been around in Sicily for a long time. And of course, the wheat or the corn um, it represents the fertility of Sicily, as you said. And the legs? She's got three legs. What do you want me to what say? You say? No, that's not true. Why does she have, <laughs> why does she have three Representing legs? She must walk like a, uh, uh, the capos, <laughs> the three capes. The three capes in Sicily. In, there's one in Messina, one in Marsala, of Messina. and one in Syracuse, yeah. correct. That, and, and what about the colors? colors? So, okay, so there, okay, you the know colors, how, wait a second. No one ever wait knew a about second. the colors. We'll talk Did about you the guys colors. know, you must have known this by watching our videos, that legends, myths, that's all Sicily. It's all about myths and legends. And everyone has a version of the truth, including Al. <laughs> everyone has their version of the truth. Well, but the I'll colors? tell why you, I'll tell you my the two versions that I like about the flag of Sicily. First of all, the red and white. It could be red the lava, red, red and yellow. And yellow. Yeah. It could be that the lava from Etna. It could be the sun. That's one. That was my Or view. the bloodshed in Sicily and the sun, you know, good and bad. But the other one that I have uh, read a lot about and some of our guides tell this story as well, the red is the color of Palermo. Yellow is the color of Corleone. And they were the two cities that started the rebellion during the Sicilian Vespers in the 1200s, right? Because Sicily- revolt. Was, it was revolt, it was, yeah. Right, a revolt or rebellion. Um, and the people who were here were the uh, Avengers. No, who was who? here during the 1200s, the Sicilian Vespers. Anyway, these were the two cities that started- the rebellion, but actually, this flag has been around for a long time, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to think about who the hell was here in the 12th to the 12th century. We had the Spanish come in at that point in time, and uh, uh, yeah, the French, the French were here, That's and yeah, right. okay. Yeah. So, Al, uh, what's your story? We've been what's to your version? yeah, but what's your version? My version is pretty, is pretty, uh, uh, you know, pretty much the same as that. Okay. The in, Odyssey, in books, Iliad, wrote, Iliad, yes, John, Iliad, what's Iliad? The Ulysses. The no, it was no, no. That the was Iliad. Homer. That was the first book. The second book was called was called you was called. Uh, no, Ulysses. Was Odyssey the it was called the, the Odyssey. Odyssey. Right. It was called the Odyssey by Homer, the Greek uh, poet right. Homer. That's a long poem. And Ulysses was the general that came up with the idea in Troy to build a Trojan horse. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, Travis Harrison, our son, got himself a Trinacria tat on his chest. Nice. Alfred McNeil, I love hats. Um, Alfred's blessings from Bonnie, Scotland. 
Okay. From awesome. Scotland, Bonnie. Are you from Scotland? No, you're not from Scotland, right? No. Okay. Okay. So in any case, so that's, what's your version? Do we have a version? And by the way, do you know when this was adopted as the official flag? Have you ever heard of the, uh, have you ever heard of know? the children's story of Cola Pesci? <laughs> Cola Pesci? Yeah. Nicola well, Pesci, the story about the, the kid who all he did was swim. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, every, he used to be able to swim and stay under the water for hours and hours and hours. And the king uh, heard about him and got his, uh, he got his ring and he threw it down and he said to the water, and he says, go, go fetch it for me. And he was able to fetch it for him. Yeah. And then he came back up and then the king got his crown which was made out of gold or something and he threw that in the water he says if you get that you know go find that and that went so far down in the water that he never came up so the myth of uh, Colapeche is that he when he was going down to retrieve the, the uh, king's uh, hat uh, the, he noticed that one of the three capes was cracked so that he's down there today as we speak <laughs> holding up one of the capes, the capes in Messina is called Pesci's holding it. It's a very famous children's story. Very cool. Cola very Pesci. cool. So in any case, one more thing about the uh, flag. It was adopted officially in 2000. Now every municipality has the European Union, the Italian, and of course, the famous Sicilian flag. All right, let me just do a couple of things here. Uh, Frank, Re Frank Roast Beef, ciao, from Lowell, Massachusetts. Read that mythical uh, three legs are... Treading water to hold up the island. Yep, That's what I was exactly, just Col exactly. Col Col Pesci, Coney yeah. Milano, hello from California. Frankie Rose speaks. Loved your piece on Shaka. Awesome. It, what he's referring to is one of our ancestral home videos that we did, right, on Shaka. Uh, Shaka is the ancestral home of Tony DeMarco, uh, the former world lightweight Col lightweight champ. Colapishi, yeah. Yeah, Colapishi, yeah. Colapishi, yeah, yeah. she says. She's probably saying it in Sicilian. Oh, so you know it. So someone's finally, somebody it's, heard about it's that. Stefania, right? it's Stefania. Stefania, thank you, sweetie. Thank okay. you. Okay, Thomas Catone would love to see you do a uh, show on Ju Sang Judas Sanguis for us looking to get citizenship. That's Alfred's work. Okay. Citizenship is Alfred's work. Listen, I'm a lawyer. Okay, I have a law partner, Massimo, in, in uh, Catania for 20 years, okay? And we do this type of stuff. But I never brag about it because I never really solicit business because we have a lot of stuff going on. But right now, it's tough to get uh, uh, dual citizenship because the waits in the, in the consulates in uh, America are so long. You have to wait over two years to get an appointment. And they check every T and dot every I. It's crazy how bad it is. Nonetheless, if you send me an email, uh, and my private email is alfredzappala1950 at gmail.com, I have uh, an information sheet I'll send you. So just send me a, an email requesting information on dual citizenship, alfredzappala1950 at gmail.com, and tomorrow I'll send you uh, my list. Okay, you know who's here? Our buddy Vivian, Vivian, ciao Vivian Cucciata. Oh you know who I am? I'm saying hello from Tewksbury, and I have been watching you this morning with my mom. Oh, so ah, sweet. Senora, Vivian, senora. buona domenica, senora. Uh, Vivian's family is from San Vito Lo Capo, and a few years ago, she gave me the address, and we were in San Vito Lo Capo, and I was like, I'm going to go to this address and I'm going to knock on the neighbor's door. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. And then I spoke zero Italian. That was like my my probably second year here. Knocked on the door, said hello to the woman, and it made her day. Then I took a picture and sent it to uh, Vivian. Well, I'm crazy about not only Vivian, but her sister Maria and Louis, who was in the service this past winter. The whole family is a great family. They immigrated from Sicily. Uh, and they became, uh, well, the father and mother did, and they became loyal U.S. citizens. Viv has a great job. She's a very talented kid. And, and uh, great, a great supporters. Pay, yeah, a great patron supporters of, of you, me, and Sicily. Yeah. So we thank Love you. Love you guys. Love you guys. Um, hi, Vivian Charlie here as well from Frank Rose Beef. Uh, let's see. Alessandro Gennaro says hello. Ciao. <laughs> Uh, second, the request on Montalbano, Sicily. Okay. Oh, how about some pieces 
on Commissario Montalbano in Chicli. Okay, we can do, if someone wants what to sponsor it? that. It, Chicli, it's, it's one of the towns out there. And um, the uh, Montalbano series was filmed mostly over there. And also oh. in Ragusa. Oh. Joe, we have to find a sponsor to go we gotta, there. Yeah, we got to find a right sponsor. Right now we have, uh, I think she has five or six in the can. What are we putting up a new yeah. episode when? So probably this Tuesday or Tuesday Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, it's on Pietra Perzia. Yeah. Our friend um, Rosie Chivari. And what's the next one coming in after that one? Probably we, Trapani. Trapani will be so the next keep, one. After yeah. That, yeah. So if you subscribe to this YouTube channel you'll see and more. hit the no notifications, that you'll get a reminder every time we post a yep. video. And by the way, if you go to this web, uh, this YouTube as well, you'll see all the other ones that we've done in this past year. Uh, John says, "Ciao, everyone from New Jersey. Ray Liotta and I grew up." In Union, different high schools, though. Okay. Do you know, wait a minute, do you know who he is? No. Oh, come on. You didn't see Goodfellas? Oh, Ray Liotta. Yeah. Well, I think people people said Bon Jovi. Someone back here said Bon Jovi. You laughing at me? As wait well. You laughing at me? Did you oh, wait, remember oh that God. line? Uh, bon Jovi, as well as Dr. Fauci, have family from Shaka. I think they're a fourth. Yeah, he's, a fourth. Like, he's, a, yeah. he's one fourth uh, Shaka. Uh, Tony right. Tony DeMarco, the former world welterweight champion uh, of the world, he's from the North End in Boston. He's his his father and mother. Uh, I think Tony even was born there. Actually, I've been trying to get him to make a statue in Shaka. They're like, who? I mean, and and you know who else that we just did a video episode? Famous person Joe DiMaggio is from the Sola della. Yeah, Joe DiMaggio is from these, and same. There's so many famous his, people from his Sicily, brother, right? His brother too, Don DiMaggio. They call him the Little Professor. Yeah, uh, he also was a great baseball player, underrated for the Red Sox, but eight-time All-Star, good ball player. Okay, uh, okay, let me see. Uh, Connie Milano, Thomas Catoni. I recently read a great book written by an American lady about getting Italian citizenship through family. Yeah. Find me on Facebook. Okay. That was a, a That's little. Yeah. I love this little conversation going on. I think I, I want to talk that, about something. You know, let me just say one thing: Is there any downside of becoming a, a EU citizen? The answer is no. There's no downside. Okay, there's no draft. People say, "Yeah, but there's a draft." They stopped the draft 25 years ago. There is no draft. It's a good place to live. That said, you ever hear the old saying, "The grass is always greener on the other side"? It's not all ice cream and cookies over here. To be frank with you, okay. America, the United States of America, despite all the vitriol that's gone on there, Esther, is still the greatest country in the world. Let me repeat that. The United States of America is still the greatest country in the world, period, end of sentence. There's nothing even in second place. Nothing is even in second place, in my sure. view. We miss Agreed. going to the States. Agreed. It's one thing to be here, and, we, and her and I say, okay, let's go home ne next month. But it's another thing to be, I don't want to say stuck here, you know, but I haven't seen my kids in a year now. A year. Yeah, she hasn't seen her mother in, in a, what, a year and a half? Well, yeah, my my second flight just got canceled. Her second so. flight, she was been bummed out all week about All right, that, let's so. do some shout outs. I want to do a big, big shout out to Sicilian girl, Patricia and Megan Swart. Her family uh, name was Trapani. And she had a very interesting question, actually, Alfred, that uh, hmm. was her name Trapani because... She, they're from Tapani, or was it something else? Typically what happened when the immigrants came into uh, New York to land, uh, the, uh, the guys at, uh, uh, you know, the customs guys, they couldn't speak Italian. A very few of them could be. So they would look at the document and they would say, they would say that it said Trapani, Italia, Sicilia. Okay. So instead of, or some small little village, they said, the hell with that. They would pick Trapani as the guy's last name. There's a million people named uh, Siciliano. Uh, mm -hmm. and guess what? That was because, the, you know, there's many words that uh, these guys were kind of <gasps> lazy. Patricia and Megan Swart are here. They were very lazy to do that. There were so many mistakes. And now the people who want to be uh, get dual citizenship, they have to go through all the rigmarole of getting all the paperwork squared away. So that's a pain in the neck. Uh uh, Patty and Megan, how funny. I didn't even know you were here, and I just pulled up your question. And by the way, they wrote, I adore your videos. Some of us will never make it over to Sicily, and some of us have very little information. That's why your videos are quite important to me. She also writes, and I'm addressing the question you wrote right now. Um, 
I also heard my great grandparents were first cousins. Do you know the whole we live on an island thingy? Uh, not no, sure. it's, it's, it's really not it's, for that. It's not for no, that. No, it happened all the time. Okay, for, it was for many asset stories. preservation, pre preserving the assets of the family. It was very common to do that. I have at least two uncles that married their first cousins, okay? Going back a couple of generations, a couple of my uncles married uh, their cousins, and it was a very common yeah. thing to do, frankly. In the United States, in order to do that, you had to get what they call a dispensation from the from the cardinal, which costs 150 bucks. So they sent in the money, and that was the end of it. But in Italy, it was for asset pres preservation, or else the state would grab it. Now, remember, we did an ancestral home, um, and I went with someone. Uh, it was um, our friend from Andover. What was her name? What was Cunningham. Her name? Cunningham. Hey, Be Betty Cunningham. Betty so Cunningham. we took her because she was looking for some documents for her citizenship. And I remember going into the community and the guy saying, yeah, your cousin ba -ba -ba, married his cousin. And, and so it is. And she was so upset. Oh, my God. My cousins intermarried in the family. But the guy said it's very usual. It's kind of funny, too. So uh, on Ancestry.com, I'm on, I was on Ancestry. Ciao, David at Siganella. They just got here. Who? Uh, David and I just friended them. David and Cheryl, I think it is, on Facebook. They just arrived to Siganella. They're and, at SIG? Oh, Wait they're a minute. Man. Before we talk about SIG, I want to honor and tip my hat to Assistant Commander Mike Watt. Oh, yeah. He got a big... Big award, award from Siganella. He's one of the guys that handles all the logistics, sending stuff all over the place. United States Naval Academy grad. What a great guy. I love him. And Anne Marie. And Anne Marie, too, of course. But he got uh, a Christine big award. Harrison says, in. happened in my family, two great aunt married her cousin. So yeah, it's normal. Yeah, I mean, all right, we need to do some shout outs. Go ahead. Pat Gelfano. I already said hi to Patricia and Megan. Vivian, of course. Don and Bate, we already said hi to them. Uh, Dusty Costello, Sue Walker, oh, and Carolyn, Sana, hello, how could we forget her? And Charles Gionetto, attorney Charles Gionetto, hello to them. Can I do one? Yeah. Okay, my brother Tommy had his 20th anniversary to Ellen. Yeah, that's great. Happy anniversary. That was more, he did more with one woman as an anniversary than I did with all my wives. It's unbelievable. Uh, you put them all together. My brother out does, does me with one wife. It's unbelievable. All right. I hate that we saved this for last because this is probably one of the most important. We're going to talk about your grandfather. No, don't, hold that. don't hold that up. No. Don't grandfather you. and your uncle. All right. Well, hold Wait, it. Wait. Hold it. The guy in the middle is my uncle, Frank Lascola. The guy on the left with the cap on, that's my grandfather, Alfio Zappola. And the fella, the good-looking fella on the left with the wavy hair is my father, Santo. Okay, I want to I want to tell you a story, not even a story, but I wanted to do a shout out because my grandfather served in World War One for the in the Italian Army as a sergeant. He was wounded in the face with shrapnel. He had, you know, his whole life he carried this shrapnel on his face. He was a very quiet guy. He had a grocery store on uh, Common Street. And he ended up, as his career, making pasta uh, at, uh, remember Prince Spaghetti? Prince Spaghetti and Lowell, right? You know, he did a bunch of stuff over there. This fellow over here is my father's, uh, my father's uh, father, okay? He won this medal, this Distinguished Service Cross, okay, for heroism, okay? Cool, huh? Yep. And for me, it was really cool to bring stuff that was my grandfather's possession back here to Sicily. I, was, I felt like in my grandfather's case, uh, we closed the circle for him because what started off here ended up making a big circle and coming back. That's beautiful. Honey. Finney, Finney's got a, Uncle Finney, the guy in the middle, he's got an interesting story. One's very humorous. They call him Finney because he used to play dice. He was one of those post- a depression, World War Two. I mean, uh, latchkey kids. You know, after the depression, they'd, they'd throw dice and stuff. And he was always asking for five bucks. A fin is five bucks, so they called him Uncle Finney. <laughs> That's how they got his name. But Uncle Finney came from. Can you hold this up so I can yep. talk at the same time? 
right there. Oh, Unc oh. Uncle Finney uh, was my grandmother's brother. She had five brothers. And the mother and the father of my grandmother died in the influenza outbreak, yeah. leaving five orphan kids, okay? And the kids got put onto a boat and shipped to the Palazzotti family, who were cousins, who sponsored them to come here. Finney was like nine or ten. And the other brothers were maybe 12, 14, 16. But Finney told me the story of when they were in Palermo waiting to get on the boat, his brother Phil had found the nail on the ground and there was a bench there. And he took a rock and he whacked the, he whacked the nail into the, the bench. And he said, someday one of us is going to come back and find this nail. So then fast forward to World War II and Finney served in Patton's army. That's another funny story, him serving in Patton's army. But he went in Patton's army, I think it was the fifth, I can't exactly remember what it was, the fifth, during Operation Husky when they came in during the Second World War. And Finney went to Palermo, was in Palermo, and he went to the docks, Michael Frank, and this was after 15, 15 or 20 years, and they found he found the bench with the nail wow. still in it. Can you believe that? Now, this next last story I'll tell you about Finney, who was my one of my favorite he was the nicest guy in the world, okay? I have to quickly explain to you two words. Uva and wova. I still Uva mess that up. <laughs> and wova. One means grapes in Sicilian dialect. The other means eggs, okay? So the, the company commander, when he was in Sicily over here, called him and said, hey, you, you're, you're Sicilian, huh? You speak Italian, huh? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, go get... 500 pounds of eggs, or 500 dozens of eggs. And he went, yes, sir, right? So he goes back out, comes back with 500 pounds, or whatever the hell it was, of grapes. <laughs> <laughs> he mispronounced the word, and, you know. We still mess up that word, don't we? Uva and over. It's and then right. finally, the last thing I want to talk about, okay? And why did I bring up my grandfather and my Uncle Finney? Grandfather served in World War I. Uncle Finney served in World War II, but there were a lot more heroes in World War II because mm -hmm. during the Second World War, Italians were rounded up and Italians were put in internment camps in the United States of America. And let's not forget that Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the president there, okay? And they were treated, they had property confiscated and every other damn thing happened. But during the Second World War, more Italian Americans died uh, freeing Europe uh, from the scourge of the Nazis than any other, than any other nationality. That's incredible. It is incredible. And can I tell one more story or no? No. Okay, I can't tell one more. <laughs> I have one more story. Well, how about this? At some point Make sure you tune in next Sunday. All right. Yeah. And you can tell that story. I, want I to have do another it. great story because you have, people... you're full of good stories. So let's All just right, save them. Great. Let's right, let's I'll just save them. Okay, okay Fred McNeil. No, we're we're gonna be closing up in a few minutes. Your videos are really good. I'm destined to live in Sicily. A friend from Florida. Her family is related to the great Al Marino. Maria, thank you for taking the time to do live chats with us. Our pleasure. We love doing this, and we love hearing from you. Um, have you ever visited Necropoli di Pantalica, Pantalica, Pantalica Gorge no. and River? No, we have Where is not. it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, grateful for your um, videos, Spaghettiville Lowell. <laughs> the Student right. Prince. That wasn't even the restaurant. Fra the Frankie Rose Prince. Beef says, my neighborhood. That's cool. Uh, Charles says, true Sicilian can't talk while holding something in your hands. That's true. <laughs> Um, do, Al, you made me made for storytelling. He certainly is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, when you tune in, also let us know what you want to hear more about, right? So we'll have more stories from Al next week, but what topics do you want to hear? Leave us a comment and leave us a comment if this is a good time slot and if you are enjoying this uh, format. Sicily is rich with stories. Sicilian Americans are rich with stories. Sicilian Americans who live in Sicily and have a little bit of cognac <laughs> are even richer in stories. <laughs> That's a good one. Like we said, myths and legends. Sicily is uh, all about myths and legends. Uh, what time does Palermo Catania start? Are you talking about are you talking about the soccer game between the two C division teams? 
that me, you, and Esther could probably beat. Tani is lousy now. They stink. The football team. Okay, Tani. all good guys. Okay, my last name is Prestia. 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 Uh, Prestia. Okay. Oh, okay. Good to see you here. Okay, we hope to see you guys here next week. Same bat time, same bat place, right? Yep. Uh, Sundays is Sundays at ten o'clock Eastern time. Work for us. Which is four p.m. Sicily and seven a.m. over. No, 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 no. You got it wrong, Esther. Seven a.m. Four p.m. here, ten a.m. in Eastern time, and seven a.m. California Pacific. Time. Right, right. And I don't know what time in Australia. I don't know what time in Brazil. I don't know what time. Well, the Canada we know, but everyone, all Sicilians from around the world, or if you're not Sicilian and you're interested about Sicily, I want to do a shout out to Jen Can and JR and Rosie. My grandkids and Johnny and my son Matthew, my daughter uh, Katie, and my grandkids MJ and Noe. I miss you all. Uh, but, but we're going to see each other someday. Don't worry about it. Love you all. Ciao. Ciao. Sabanadiga. Ciao.